this is just the beginning of great yeah. things. Yeah. And we thank God for what he's doing. He's moving by his spirit. And we always say, move, O oh Lord, in me. Don't pass me by. That's right. They used to have a song saying, do not pass me by. Yeah. I don't want to be excluded, but I thank God that it's all about our desire and just going after him. Right. Don't pass That's me by. Right. So we yeah. thank God for this great woman of God. I'm going to ask everybody to stand to their feet. Yeah. We thank yeah. God for this great woman of God that yeah. God has yeah. just joined together right in the work of the ministry. The ministry of Jesus Christ. This isn't Paul King's ministry. This is the ministry of Jesus Christ. And we thank God for a God called and sent sister of his, a daughter of his. Yeah. So at this time as we present to some and introduce to others, Sister Valerie Mona Brown. Let's give God a hand, praise, as she comes forward tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, yes. oh, my soul is so happy tonight. Ooh. I mean, I can just feel the Holy Ghost bubbling. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, don't let me get over here and start running around this church because I feel like it tonight. Yes. My God, he is so good. Yes, he is good. He is so good. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Oh, my God. It's a blessing. When I woke up this morning, I opened my eyes. I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, you got a purpose for me. Yeah. Hey, I don't take that lightly. Anytime you open your eyes, God got a purpose. Because yes. he could have been left to stay asleep. But he ain't finished. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I said, okay, God, thank you for waking me up one more day. Right. And so this is an opportunity yes, it is. To, to be a, 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 a light for God, to be a witness for God, to, to be a help to somebody. Oh, it's a privilege to be alive. Mm -hmm. And I just thank him all tonight. Let's just uh, look away to the Lord. God, thank you for this day. Thank you, God, for just keeping us all day long. Thank Nobody you. but you. Yes, Thank you for watching over us, God. Even as we travel the roads and the highways, you kept us from accidents. Yes, we Lord. thank you on tonight for that. We thank you, God, for just giving us a sound mind. Thank you, thank you for the peace of God that passes all understanding. Thank we thank you, God, just for a house of God that we can come to. Mm -hmm. We thank you for giving us a, a, up on this rock. Thank you for, God, opening up the doors for uh, people that are looking for a way out and people that are needing a hope. Yeah. God is hope in this place. We thank you for it tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God, for the people of God. Yes. And God, just ask you to have your way tonight. Have Let your way. word, God, let it prevail. Yes. Let it reap where you said it. Yes. Let it, God, bring, build up. Yes. Let it encourage God. Yes. Let your word, let it dominate in the name of Jesus. God, and we will give you the glory. We will praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And let every heart say amen. amen. All my soul say yes. Yes, Lord, yes. You all, you all will be seated. And I won't be before you long. But boy, I tell you, God gave me this word. And he said, I am an interceptor. Not intercessor, but interceptor. I was like, glory to God. He said, he said you know how they do on the football? That ball be going one way. The team on that, they losing. They threw that ball up in the air. And somebody jumped up in there and caught that ball. And turned around and won. That's right. That's right. God said, I am an, an, I am an, an interceptor. That's right. That's right. I come to intercept. That's right. Because, that, you know, the enemy got plans, but God said, I come to intercept. Right. Glory to God. I come to change things around. <laughs> when he think he got you, even when the people get sick, people think that they got but the woman of Israel blood. He intercepted that thing. Yes, that woman touched on him and his garment. Yes. And he intercepted. That blood stopped. Yes. Woo. What it was meant to do, he intercepted. Thank you, boy. Oh my God. God said, so I'm going to intercept it. Yes, yes. Don't, don't, don't fret. 
I got a plan for your life too. Mm. The enemy got a plan for you, but God got a better plan. Yes. And what he do, he intercept. Oh God, thank you. He intercept. Yes. And I'm loving this word because when he said that word, I just got excited. Uh -huh. Because he was like, I'm the one that caused things to turn. Yes, yes. We were born in sin. Mm -hmm. Jesus got on that cross and intercepted. Let me get into the word. Because I'm telling you, I am excited about Jesus. We're going to go over here to Esther. Mm, come on. Now, we ain't going to even talk about Esther tonight. We're going to talk about Mordecai. Right. Right. Glory to God. You know, there's a lot of Esther. Oh, there's a lot of Esther. I come back to her. We're going to deal with her uncle tonight. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I tell you, you know. Mordecai, he was a um, he was a he was he was Esther uncle, and he was a Jew. And uh, Mordecai, he he was sitting at the gate because he was checking on uh, Esther. He was checking on her, so he sit there. So it was this guy named Hannah. You know, he didn't he 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 was something to the king. Right. Uh, and the king like, promoted him and everything. And so what he did, you know, he was all excited, but he was, everybody would bow, except Mordecai. Now, he, he ain't had no problem with, I mean, you got most of the people bow to you. Why you, why you, have, why you focusing on one person not doing it? Right. But that's what the devil would do. Uh -huh. He looking at the one, he don't care about the one bowing. I want the one that ain't bowing. Right. Let me give him a hard time. Yeah. <laughs> And so, I, and you know, I'm just excited. I don't know this is where this giggle come from, but I'm excited about Jesus. <laughs> and um, so him and, you know, he, he got furious. He got upset because Mordecai wouldn't bow. Mm -hmm. That's true. Wow. And so I'm just bringing it up to a point where I'm, I'm going to. And so uh, what, what, what Haman did, he went before the king and told him it was a certain people scattered ab abroad and they dispersed among the people in the province of the kingdom, and their laws were, were diverse from all the people, and neither did they keep the king law. So he's he stirring something up. So the king was like, um, so he told the king that. So he said, if it please you, king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. Well, the king didn't look into it too well, so he was like, okay, go ahead, do what you're going to do, I'm going to let you do it. He gave a ring and everything. Well, him and all excited and everything about it, <laughs> you know, and he knew Mordecai was a Jew. Mm -hmm. So this 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 thing that he wanted, he put out, he wanted to kill all the Jews. Right. He mm -hmm. wanted all of them killed, children, all of them, uh -huh. because of Mordecai. Like and so, and so the king gave him a, to do it. And when Mordecai heard, there's some a lot in that, but I'm just gonna, I'm I'm going uh -huh. as God leads. Mordecai got wind of it, and he began to, you know, weep. Bitter. He got out there and cried and weep bitterly. Right. So I'm going to go. We're going to go over to Esther, and I want to go to uh, chapter five, okay. and I want to start at the thirteenth verse. Now this is the plan Hammond had for Mordecai. Mm -hmm. This is what Hammond had planned for. It said, yet all this availed me nothing. Let me see that. Let me see. Wait a minute. Yeah, I go to that. He said, all this availed me nothing. So as long, because what he's saying is, all that I'm getting, all this this ring, everything I got from the, this ain't availed me nothing if, if Mordecai don't bow. I, that's, what he's, that's, what, that's why we start right here like that. Okay. He said, yet all this availed me nothing. So as long as I see Mordecai and the Jews sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zerus, his wife, and all his friends unto him, Let a gallon be made a fifty cubit high, and tomorrow speak thou unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet, and the and the thing please Hammond. And he caused the gallon to be made. <laughs> and then we're gonna stay right there for a minute. You sit there and went through all that trouble, mm -hmm. all because the man wouldn't bow. 
to you. Right. And so he went through this trouble to have this man. This was his plan. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have him hang. First he wanted all the people killed, but now you want to kill him too. He wanted to kill everybody else, but he was like, this is the plan, I'm going to get him first. Like, I want to build this. I want him dead. Uh -huh. So he went through that, listen to the people. His wife and his friends told him, yeah, that's a good idea. Well, doesn't that sound like the devil to you? Right. You gonna plan to have somebody killed. <laughs> but boy, I tell you the truth. See, Mordecai, before all this happened, he he saw, uh, he was at the gate, and he heard that the king, some two guys wanted to kill the king. And he got wind of it, so he told Esther, Esther told the king, and the king had them guys that killed. And what they did, they put Mordecai's name in the records. Mm -hmm. Okay? okay? Now, Hammond up here, this is why I got excited. He's sitting there plotting mm -hmm. to kill Mordecai. Right. Here's where the interception come in. Right. You go down to verse, chapter 6, verse 1. Okay. On this night, on that night, could not the king sleep. And he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. This is the same book Mordecai named in now. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Begatha and Therese, two of the king's chamberlain, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hands on the king Hazarus. Now look at this. These two, his closest people, the king closest people, they wanted to have him killed. Mm -hmm. And they told him working for him. Right. But look, Mordecai was brave enough to tell on them. See, that's what we have to remember. When, when people is plotting and God give you wind of it, right. don't be afraid to speak up. Right. Don't be afraid to, to tell on them. You know, when you're standing, they were supposed to be standing with the king. But they betrayed him. They wanted him killed. But God had a man standing there saying, I'm telling you. We got to be that bold. So you know, oh, you going to do that? Then I'm going to tell you. You that bold? I'm going to tell on you then. You know, right. so that's what, that's what he did. He told them. But look what happened though. And so, and the king said, what honor and dignity had been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, there is nothing done for him. And the king said, who was in the court? <laughs> now Hammond was come in, come in into the outer out court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallon that he had prepared for him. While the enemy planned this, then God used the king to honor this man at the same time. Look how interception that yeah. right at the same time. That's why I got excited. I said, hold on, oh God. You is on time. Yes, yes. At the same time, this man will come and tell the king that I, what I want to do, I'm gonna hang this guy. Right. And the king at the same time, this king saying, Who is who who who, who there? They were like, he was like, it's me. And then, so he started inquiring, not knowing it was Mordecai. This, Hammond didn't know he was talking about Hammond thought he was talking about him. So here go the king. And the king uh, said, the king said, who is in the court? Now Hammond was coming into the outer court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallery that he had prepared for him. And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, Hammond standing in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. So Hammond come in. And the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor? Wow. Now Hammond thought in his heart, conceit, <laughs> to whom would the king delight to do honor more than myself? Hmm. And, the, and, the, and Hammond answered in the king, For the man whom the king delighted to honor, let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear. And the horse that the king ride upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head. And let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, 
that they may array the man with whom the king delighted to honor and bring him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Yes. Then the king said to him, make haste, get in a hurry, yes. and take the apparel and the horse, and as thou hast said, and do even to Mordecai the Jew. <laughs> oh my God. He said, this is what I want you to do. He said, that sit it at the king's gate. Let nothing that you said, that nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Everything you just said should be done. Let, I want you to do it. Yeah. Now that's the same person. Wow. Walked yeah. in to say, I'm going to kill him. I'm <laughs> And God intercede, intercepted. That plan got intercepted. <laughs> I'm talking about why he was plotting on, why he was trying to want to kill this man. And then God turned out and made this man speak highly of the one you finna kill. You have said all you want to do and didn't know you were going to have to do it. Then you said, let him be going through the Going through the on the horse, you gonna have to carry him through the horse. But that's the same man you and told your wife, your friends, all of you built up on them. Right. Now all of them see you walking, <laughs> you carrying them, and here Mordecai the way you want to kill Born on the horse. Yeah, rolled out. I see. That's when God started talking to me. He said, "I'm an interceptor." He said, "Don't fret." Don't worry. Yes, right. We should have that word. Don't fret because of evil do. That's right. God enters right at the. I'm talking about right on time. Yeah. Mordecai didn't know that was gonna happen. Right. Uh, God got in that king conscious, uh, and then even he rocked him, woke him up, couldn't even sleep. God did this. This, and then here the devil over here using this man, plotting on. Oh, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Okay, go ahead. You, you, you got a plan, but God over here dealing with this man with authority. Yes. Oh, he dealing with what I'm saying. You, wait, remember that guy, boy, guy. See, your deeds don't go undone, don't, don't go unseen by God. When you doing good, you might think God will forget. But God ain't forget about us. I mean, he will, he will put your, you in somebody's heart. And they will be like, you remember Lady Lisa, you was, you remember Sister Martin, is your name Marty? Muffin. Muffin. You remember Sister Muffin, Brother Reuben, yeah. Pastor Paul, yeah. Sister Terry, and all the rest of the saints. Yeah. God said, I remember when they did this. You, you don't forget all about it. You just doing good. And, and you might be going through some stuff, but you forgot what you did. But God said, he got a record. A record. Yes, he let me let me check. Oh, God. what did anything been done for so and so? Yeah. And somebody said, no. And here the here the you. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the upset of the enemy? That here you got a whole gallon for this man to be hung on, and you the one got to take your enemy through the streets on the horse. How humiliating! <laughs> God will humiliate the devil. <laughs> Here. So he said, again, yeah, he had told oh, all you know, he did, you know what? I think he did, oh, I can see the I can see the humiliation. Yeah. He went back to his house and then he said. He went back and told his wife, they were like, uh-oh. Then they gave him the advice. Hmm. They gave him the advice, now they saying, uh-oh, you shouldn't have never did that one. <laughs> see, see how people do that, push you? Right, right. They'll push you. I'm going somewhere else with this. Trust me, this ain't the end of this here intercept. God is dealt with me on this one. This here, man, what God was, what God said, why the enemy be plotting, I be planning. Why he plotting for you, I'm planning for you. And you don't even see that. You don't even, you can't even see it. But just keep walking up right. Keep doing the right thing. You know, and so, I, I, I mean, I, I'm talking about, I got so excited when he said intercept. 
He said, at the same time. See, you can get so close. Like the children at the Red Sea. They got their, they said the Pharaoh behind him and the Red Sea right at the nick of time. Jesus intercepted. He intercepted. Yes. When they thought they were going to be destroyed. Jesus said, uh-uh. God said, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. Open that. What you got in your hand, Moses? Stretch it out. Yes. Stretch it out. And when he did, they went over. The Bible said, on dry ground. That was an interception. What the devil planned didn't work. I said, the one, I'm telling you. I'm looking at God. And he, this man plotted. He wanted a man there for no reason. But look what God, look what, look what the king said. What about, what about Mordecai? And the devil said, what, what did, what, did, when the world come to Lady Lisa talk, you consider my daughter, you consider my son. Right, right. Uh, go ahead. But God is going to intercept. Don't they, I'm talking about if the people, they, when you see intercession, if, you can be room for a team. I'm, I'm like this when it comes down to sports. I'll be with you until you start losing, then I'll hop on the wind <laughs> thing. <laughs> and my sons will get upset at me because they go, you can't do that. I said, I can't. I said, I'm on the winning side. So if you lose, then okay, I'm going to go on over here on this side. And, and, and like that. But I'm saying how them, they, they can be winning and an innocent, somebody throw the ball and somebody hop up there and intercept it. And that changed the whole dynamics. Yeah, that's and right. that's what that's what Jesus do. Let's go over into the New Testament. Uh -huh. Oh my God. Jesus is the interceptor. Yes, he is. He's our interception. Interceptor. So we're going to go to, I have wrote a few verses I want. Um, the, could, like Lisa, could you get this one for me? John. 10 and 10. Mm -hmm. And Pastor, could you get this one for me? Luke 23, verses 42 and 43. 43. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank Jesus. You, Thank you, Lord. Pastor, you can read yours first. Okay. Luke 23, mm -hmm. verse 42 and 43. Mm -hmm. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Would not have intercepted. Didn't he intercept that? Oh, right. That man was on his way to hell. Yes, he was. And Jesus <laughs> stopped what he was doing and intercepted that. Because of that man acts, he intercepted his direction. Yeah. Even though he was on the cross. Man, he was he even said, he said, We 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 have a one of them said, why if you be the son, won't you can uh, uh, come on down? The other one like you you foolish. Because we the one up here because of something we did, he ain't did nothing. Right. But he asked him what he what he remember. Mm -hmm. And he intercepted, he stopped what he he stopped that man's life. From going to hell. That's right. Yes, that is what Jesus do. Yes, it is. That's what He come to do. Yes. You know, He come to do that. Lady Lisa, read yours for me. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. We look at that. Don't that sound like somebody uh, intercepting something That's for you? Right. I come to intercept. He's, I come to give you. He come to steal. Mm -hmm. he, he come to kill. That's his plan for you. That's true. He, he, his plan is for the kill, sin, and destroy. He said, but I come to give you. Let me intercept in your life so I can, so I can stop and turn your life around. Thank you, Lord. Let me stop it. Let me stop the thief. Yes. You know, and, and I'm sitting there like, he said, I will intercept, God told me, he said, I intercept, I will intercept. 
the enemy. I will intercept him for your life. You come to me. And look at this. When Jesus was upon that cross, he didn't just intercept for that man. He intercepted for the sins of the whole world. While they was down there talking all that stuff, if he would have came down, it would, we would have been doomed. But by him staying up there, he intercepted the plan that we had to, that was planned for the mankind. Jesus standing on that cross changed the whole dynamics. Because we was headed for doom. But God sent his only begotten son that we don't perish. He sent him so we could be saved. And if Jesus would have come down, it wouldn't have been no interception. But he said, I'm going to intercept. I don't care what y'all saying down there. Because y'all, y'all, it ain't everybody ain't feeling like y'all feeling. Right. But even y'all, even the sinner man, he intercepted. Yes, he did. That was he intercepted. He just said, I'm going to intercept and I'm just going to die and I'm going to leave all the people that believe me on earth and kill the other one. He loved everybody. He intercepted for them. Yes. Let's go to Matthew 11. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You hear it? You hear me? Come on, let me intercept for you. While you heavy, I'll intercept and give you rest. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get in there and intercept your weariness and give you some rest. That's right. He said, let me read that again. Come unto me, all ye that labor and that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I'm an interceptor. Come on. Come on to me. You, you go on that route. You think you can't do no better? You think you can't stop doing this and stop doing that? You can't help yourself? Let me intercede. Let me, let me make a change in your life. Let me turn things around for you. Let me intercept what the devil got planned for you. Let me stop him for you. Come on to me so I can stop him, the plan that he got for you. Come on. Come on and let him, let me inter intercept your life. Because he want to kill you. He want to steal from you. He want to destroy you. But I want to give you life. Let me intercept. Let me block him. Let me block that plan he got. Let me let me do it for you. You somebody told you 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 ain't nothing. Uh uh. Come on. Let me let me block you. So the devil tell you go ahead in your life. Uh uh. Uh uh. Come on. Come on unto me. I'll give you rest and I'll intercept that thing that that thought. I'll intercept it. Jesus intercepted not just for the same same people. He intercepted for the sinner man. He comes to prevent the thing that the devil got planned that you don't even see. But if he said, you come unto me, I'll give you some rest. I'll stop that thing. I'll make your life turn around instantly. Didn't he do it for us? When we came unto him, we was on our way in one direction. Headed to the lake. Headed to hell. We was on our way. And we cried out to Jesus. And he intercepted. He intercepted. Yes, he did. And he, he, he said, oh, okay, they calling on me. Let me stop what was about to happen to them. Uh -huh. it, was a, it was some things happened to us on the choices we made. Right. But when we got tired, and God said, I see your tiredness. Mm -hmm. Come to me, I'll stop this. Yes. And then he stop it. Yes. He stopped the, he stopped the, the, the mind that from roaming. He stopped you from being worried and weary. He stopped all of that. He gave you peace. Yes. He intercepted that mind that was confused, and he put some peace there. He intercepted. Hallelujah. He intercepted. Jesus is an interceptor. Yes, he, he comes to change the plan of the enemy. Yes, he does. And he can do it. To, he did it then, yes. and he can do it today. He's the same God. Yes. He, today, yesterday, and he's going to forever be the same. Yes, he he comes to change. People are like, oh, why am I Feeling like, why am I? Come on to Jesus. Yes. He, he wasn't going to have troubles.
But guess what? Them troubles ain't going to swallow you up. Because the interceptor is on your side. He might let you go through a little something, but he won't be like, hold up. Oh, that's a Didn't he tell them, him about you? He said, you can take all this stuff around him, but don't touch his soul. Intercept him. Because the devil would have did. The devil wanted to kill him. But Jesus, he said, guys, uh-huh. Um, don't touch his soul. Don't touch his soul. Don't touch it. You can touch that stuff around there. I'm going to give him some more of that. But don't touch his soul. Job didn't charge God foolish. He was like, uh-huh, naked I came, naked I shall return. God said, oh, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna have to be an interceptor for this man here. And guess what? He got all that stuff that, that he, the enemy touched. Got it back. Double. God is saying, Jesus is saying today as he was then. He want us to just come unto him. Come unto me. So I can get in the back of you and lead you. And then get in the front of you and you can follow me. Hallelujah. He's an interceptor. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, I don't know if that's called an interceptor with the things they put on your TV and all that kind of stuff. And it, it stops up. Is that it? Maybe that ain't what I'm thinking about. But I know Jesus is one. <laughs> Look, I'll stick with him being the interceptor. I ain't going to use that now. <laughs> Jesus is the interceptor. So he said, come on, take my yoke upon you. You want to learn something? Come on, learn to me. Come learn to me. So I can make your life better. That's what it's about. He comes to intercept what the devil has planned. The devil got a plan for everybody on this earth. He got one. Even for the ones that live for him. He don't care. He don't, he don't care about killing nobody. But you got somebody that say, if you come to me, I will block whatever. Block. See, people right now in life, this was that they were they in situations where they think ain't no way out. That's right. They think they came to the end of their road. That's true. Oh, Just God. in the nick of time. Ain't they getting more than tired? Oh, Just in the nick of time. Jesus what the king was planning to bless this man while the devil was planning to kill him. Look at that. Look at that. He was planning on killing him. But God stepped in that king's heart. And he, then he said, the heart of the king <laughs> is anything he turned away he walked through. Didn't he say that? He turned that man's heart in the middle of the night. Why you look at him? He didn't he let him get, build it. Go ahead and build it. Because you finna be the one to get on that one. And that's what happened to him. That's another method. But, but I'm telling you, God, Jesus is our interceptor. That's what I want to leave on y'all conscience. Yes. When you think you at your wits end, yes. when you think that can't nothing else but, but bad happen to you and think God and went to sleep on you, uh-uh, mm. come on to Jesus yes. so he can intercept your life. Yeah. He, he the one turned your life around That's right. when it was going raggedly, when it was going toward hell, when it was going toward, when you think that, see, cause I've been there, when you be like, I can't live without him, I love him, I love him, he don't love you. <laughs> that ain't the end of the world. Right. Jesus, let him intercept that, because he got something better. He got something better. But people don't believe, they think this is it. That means I don't love you. I said, yes, you do. <laughs> when I got saved, I said, boy, he was telling the truth. <laughs> See what I mean? Jesus, is the, he, he intercepts my life one day. Well, I didn't think it was nothing, no hope. I didn't think it was no hope. But he stepped in. I remember going down the street crying, looking up saying, it's got to be a better way. If this life ain't nothing else in life, I don't want to be here. I was like, God, take this pain that this pain that I got for this man, take it out of my heart. I'm crying going down the street. Just that got hurt. But before I knew it, the interceptor came a couple months later. Woo! The interceptor stepped in. And then that very person that was I was 
and a fool over. Came back knocking on the door. Mm. The interceptor had stepped in. I was like, what you want? Right. He was like, how you been doing? I said, I'm saved. All right. What that mean? I said, I said, I'm saved. He said, I'm saved for what? I said, people like you. <laughs> he didn't even know that was a good answer, but I said it. Yes. The interceptor stepped in. He used to follow me to church and all that. I was like, I don't want you now. You should have got me then. The interceptor steps in and give you integrity. The interceptor steps in and give you uh, courage. The interceptor gets stepped in and give you a mind to go on in the Lord. That's what he does for you. When you thought you couldn't do no better, the interceptor step in and say, oh, come on. Come on, follow me. I'm going to give you some rest. I'm going to give you some peace. Then here I am walking down. I don't need that. I don't want that. That's right. What you want? <laughs> can I uh, just come in? Have come on have a seat. Can we can can I can we hug? I said, I don't know. I said I gotta check with my pastor and then I'll get back with you on that one. <laughs> now, it was a time I was just hugging and you ain't got that thing. Right, right. But the intercept stepped in. <laughs> come on. Hey, can I can I uh can we uh so I can't kiss you? I said, hmm. I said, I don't even know, but don't do it. Let me find out. Right. The interceptor stepped in. Oh, when I begin to go to church and come back, every night I come back, not gonna do I ain't know, I ain't know you on you know, I ain't know how it go. He would come in, I'm fixing dinner. I said, I said, the word said don't eat, eat with your enemy. I said, don't come back over here. Mm. Interceptor stepped in. Right, right. Then he was like, knock on the door. I come to get my son. I said, how about this? Just blow your horn, don't knock on my door no more. Intercept. Before I knew it, I was like, don't come back around at all. all right, See, that's what the intercept do. Yes. Put a, get, I mean, when the devil playing on running me crazy, right. making me think I can live without no man, come on. The, he stepped in and said, uh, let me make a, let me make some adjustments in her life. Let me intercede. Let me intercept. And that's what he did. So see, you can make it. In the Lord, he said, come unto me. Whether you're saved, come unto me. Whether you're not saved, come unto me. He said, because I'm going to give you some rest. I'm going to intercept for you. When you sit there worried about some bills, Talk to the interceptor. That's right. Because he will intercept for you too on that too. Yeah. It ain't a thing that you can't, ain't nothing on this earth that you can't go to God. He's a cast all your cares on him, for he care for you. He will intercept on every aspect of your life if you let him. I thank God for tonight. Hallelujah. I thank God for the interceptor. Hallelujah. My soul is made happy because we got somebody we can that goes run in. Run interference. In. Yes. He running interference. Yes, <laughs> you know the football guy, they be the, the one that they the one that they uh, intercept and now they want to they, they knock him to the ground. They try, but you can't knock Jesus to the ground. <laughs> See, he an interceptor that can't be stopped. Can't stop him. So I'm glad on tonight. I ask y'all to keep praying. Let's keep praying one for the other. I am complete my mission for tonight. Uh, so I'm going to get it back over into the hands of, let me pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, because your word is true. We thank you, God, for being an interceptor for us. Thank you for not letting the devil get the advantage of our life. Thank you, Lord, for in the, being an interceptor in every aspect of our life. And we just ask that you would just go with us and keep us and let this word let it be sealed and hid in our heart yes, that Lord. we will be reminded that you are the interceptor for us. Help us to continue to remember that you are the one that give us life and you're the yes. one that give us soundness of mind. Yes, Go with us, God, and keep us Lord, and yes. let your word prevail and let it reap where well you yes, sin it. In Lord, Jesus' Lord. name we pray and let everyone say amen. 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 Let's give God a hand praise for the word tonight. Yes, Thank Lord. God. We're going to take up a
next speaker offering. Thank God for Sister Valerie. Yes. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. He will intercept. Good word. I'm Good glad word. about this.